Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time here? All right, good evening, everyone. Good to have everybody out once again. Could we all please stand so we can go ahead and do our evening pledges, please? Everybody ready? I pledge allegiance to the Bible. God's holy word, I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and will hide its words in my heart, that I might not sin against God. To our Christian flag, I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again. And to the American flag, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, you'd like for the choir to come on up, please. We're going to sing alto. Do what? Jesus, Jesus. 
Stand for a fellowship, please.
Everybody, we've got a lot to pray about tonight. We'll go ahead and continue on here while they're gathered there. As we mentioned earlier this morning, we, we need to remember the Sharon Horn family, uh, the Justin Muse family uh, praise report, uh, Bob and Dolores' uh, son-in-law, Robert. To remember Sister Maggie, her sister and her brother, Kathy Dexter. Uh, again, she reminded us to remember um, Israel and remember Sister Pat and Donna's cousin. We've got several others that were mentioned here. We've got uh, Jeff's neighbor and his brother, uh, Emily Irwin, and let's remember Sister Teresa, Brianna, and I can't even read my own right here now, so I'm going to have to stop right there. <laughs> I might say something I don't want to, so. All right, anybody else have any other requests that we need to remember tonight? Hey, man, let's remember Sister Joyce tonight. Hey, hey man, the White family, let's remember them as well. Who else, please? All right, let's see. Hey, man, certainly remember that. Amen. Anyone else have a prayer request? All right, those that will, let's all come into the altar, please. Let's take it before the Lord in prayer. Amen. May I have that man up for the evening offering, please? <laughs> Brother Jerry. Amen. While they're taking that back, we've only got one announcement to make. Again, that's February the 18th. Is uh, we'll be having the the youth. What they call that? Valentine's. Youth Valentine's dinner. So, I I was trying to find another word for it. I'm sorry, but but anyway, let's not forget that, please. All right, we've got a special singing or special guitar playing. So we'll see. This young lady right here, let's, let's all get, stand behind her tonight. Choir practice next week, 5 o'clock. I knew 
God had her hand had his hand over them. Because I prayed every single day to put their hand his hand over my family. So I just want to dedicate this song to Jesus. the over it. She's learned that all by herself. That's great. That is great. Anyone else have a song? Alice? It don't look like anybody's volunteering, Brother Bobby. So we'll leave it up to you, Brother. Amen. Been good to be in God's house. Yeah, I like it when we see something a little different, don't you? Yes, sir. Amen. I remember Haley when she first started coming here, just a little quiet child. You couldn't pay her to say a word. <laughs> and now she's testifying, playing the guitar. I'm really proud of her yes, and all of our young people. Amen. Amen. All right, then. Let's get with it, was it say. Let's go back to Gospel Luke. And I know... A couple of you done reminded me how much longer you're going to be in here. We've been here a month. Well, I don't know. But Luke chapter number 24, beginning verse number 50, you should have it in your Bible already. Amen. Amen. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Father God, as we bow before you, thanking you so much for this day. Lord, thanking you once again for the opportunity to be in your house, stand in this pulpit and proclaim your precious word. God, we thank you for the songs that have been sang in your honor and glory. And Father, we do pray for the power of God upon this message, wisdom and discernment of the scriptures. God, we pray that you would give us the words to say. Open up hearts and minds and ears, God, to accept your word this night and apply it to our lives. We love you. We thank you, giving you the praise, the honor, the glory for it all. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we do pray, and amen. amen. I preached this morning about how he lifted up his hands. And he lifted up his hands because Jesus always walks in victory, Amen. And if we walk with him, we're going to walk in victory. But I want to preach it tonight is that he lifted up his hands, but he didn't stop there. Jesus just kept giving them more and more and more because he saw the end from the beginning. He knew what they'd stand in need of. He knew it was a wicked world he was leaving them in. He knew that the devil would fight them upon every hand. He knew that sometimes they would be their own worst enemy. And what they needed to start this ministry out was a good blessing. Amen. Amen. And so the Bible says that he blessed them 
before he went up into heaven. They blessed him because they saw his miracles. You and I just read about it, amen. We talk about him uh, healing the blind and the blind can see and the lame to walk and, and uh, the, he cast the demons out of those that were demon possessed. We read these as stories. We know they're real because they're in the Bible. But could you imagine for three and a half years walking with the Savior and watching it as it happened? Every time they kept come up on a blind man, they watched him as that blind man could now see. I'll tell you one of the most sights that they ever saw was the time they were in the midst of a storm and he's, Jesus wasn't in the boat this time and he walked on water just to get to where they were. That's how much God blessed him. God was that his attitude was this, friend. He said, I will not go to glory just yet until not only will I lift my hands in victory, but bless God, I'm blessing my preachers. How many knows that every day we get up, we've got a God that sits on the right hand of the Father and before we ever start our day, He's already got a blessing. He's already called our name before our Heavenly Father. He's already put our enemies on notice and He blessed His preachers before they ever preached their first message, before they ever got to the temple, before they ever left His presence. They left with a blessing. Now I tell you what, I believe we ought to be blessed every time we come into God's house. Here's what I will not do tonight and I will not ever do. I will not preach a message in this church as if Sunday night was lesser than Sunday morning. I don't believe that you get your best on Sunday morning and you get what's left over on Sunday night. I serve a God that gives me the best He's got every time. Bless God we come to His house, every time we get in the pulpit, every time we open that blessed book, every time that we bow our head into prayer. Bless God He's given giving us the best that he has I'll give him no less than that he'll give him the best that I've got anytime we want to do something in his precious name bless God give it the best you got to give him Amen. so he now he blessed them He's about to let them walk in victory. You understand, he lifted up his hands. That was his victory walk. That was his victory salute. That was his victory sign. That was letting him know everything that he had just accomplished, everything that he did. Now it's all about what he can do through them. How many knows in this church tonight that once we get born again, we've signed up to the roster. We're playing on the winning team. We've got a God that we do what we do for him, for his name, and for his glory and bless God church we're going to do the best that he can because God equips us not just mediocre not just enough to get by but thank God what we have he gives us in abundance amen, amen. so now he blessed them I don't know what it was like I know that in those days the elders blessed younger the priests blessed the congregation the parents blessed the children. But can you imagine? You've seen what Jesus is capable of. You've heard the messages that he's preached. You've seen the miracles that he's performed. And now you're about to receive a blessing. He has blessed others. But this time, this is all about them. It's all about Jesus right here. And it's about 11 hand-picked preachers right there. He's going up there. He's not preaching a message to them. He's giving them a touch from up on high. He's giving and anointing them on what? they would need to go carry out what he has called them to do he's a God that he called them he called them by name he called them by choice he called them for one reason that they would follow him for three and a half years and then he would leave them and go to glory and they would be his voice to a lost in a dying world he equipped them with everything they need they've heard him preach they knew his doctrine they, could, they knew what the gospel was but what they needed was a blessing and an anointing and so that when they spoke and they preached and what they did they did with the power of God upon them amen so you understand he didn't send them out there empty handed I want that touch from on high don't you 
I want that anointing of God to flow all over me. I don't want to preach dead. I don't want to preach dry. I want to preach, bless God, like I believe what I'm preaching about, like I've met the man that I'm preaching about, like I've spent some time with Jesus. I want to preach in a way that He has blessed me before I ever get into this pulpit. He's given me the message from up on high. He's given me this blessed book. And thank God He pours out the anointing. Amen. He blessed them. You know what blessing means? It means he's got their, he gave them his favor. It ain't like they're just doing this on their own. It ain't like they just chose this one day. The fact of it is, he called them from what they once did. He turned them into who they, not, not who they used to be, but who he wants them to be now. They're not fishing anymore. They're not collecting taxes anymore. They are preachers. Are you understand? Their one job in this world is to introduce the Lord Jesus Christ to a lost in a dying world when we preach it ain't in my name it's in the name of the Lord Jesus when we pray it's in the name of the Lord Jesus and what we do is for his honor and for his glory and he blessed them because he did not want to send them out doing anything other than preaching in his name so now he blessed them they, he was blessed with their, his mercy and forgiveness. They got his benefits. You talk about a benefit package. It's better than any corporation will ever give you. It's not about a layaway plan. It's not about a retirement plan. Let me tell you, church, we are never going to retire. Are you hearing me tonight? And the fact of it is, we simply move from down here to up there one day. It's an upgrade. It's that God is pouring out, and he's giving us what we need. He's said he, he ain't sending us out empty he'll give us what we need to do the job is there anybody in this church tonight that is now doing something for the glory of God that you didn't think you could ever do you didn't think you were equipped it wasn't who you was but God came into your life he changed who you was made you into who you are now so that you could go out and tell him just the hell of lost in a dying world just how wonderful Jesus Christ really is you see, for three and a half years, Israel heard the Lord Jesus Christ preach. Amen. They didn't hear nothing much from these disciples, just a little bit every once in a while. But now it's all about them preaching his word. Do you understand? They ain't preaching their opinion. They're preaching his word. If you preach anything other than the word of Almighty God, you ain't preaching for Jesus. Amen. So now he's got them anointed. He's blessed them. He's sending them out, but they've got his benefits. And <clears throat> when you look at others, he blesses others through them. How many in this church know that we are to be a blessing on God's goodness to somebody else? He, did, he said, boys, he said, I've been good to you. I've let you see things nobody else has seen. I've let you hear things that nobody else has heard. I took three of you up on the Mount of Transfiguration. You got to see what's on the other side. You three know something that nobody else does. You see when God rolled heaven back, you saw me and Moses and Elijah you saw me in my glorified body you saw what happened what is waiting for everybody on the other side he said you've got something that you can tell you've got something worth preaching about how many in this church tonight knows that there ain't nothing outside of the message of the Lord Jesus Christ there ain't nothing else worth talking about everything is out of words it ain't nothing but gossip but thank God when you tell somebody about the Lord Jesus Christ and how goodness he is and what he's done for you you see that's what he did for three and a half years he did for these men so that they could go out and tell the world what he's done for them and do for them the same thing Amen. you see he blessed them he blessed them with a message to preach he blessed them with a job to do and now he's about to bless them from upon high so that they can go do that job we all understand that we can't do it on our own strength we don't do it on our own merits we don't do it on our own ability we do everything under the anointing and the leadership of the Lord Jesus Christ and so now he's got them and they're pretty much in a corner. That cloud, as they can see, that cloud, it's on its way down. It's descending. He's about to step on it at any time. But he will not let them go. 
do the job he called them to do until he blesses them. How many in this church tonight knows that before we do anything, we better seek the blessing of God. We better seek the touch of God. We better seek the anointing of Almighty God and not try to do it upon ourselves because when we go, we're going with every power that heaven has to offer. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead, he puts inside of us. He knew that it would be 10 short days that these 11 men and 119 more or ever how many it is 109 more they'd be in an upper room somewhere and they would be waiting but he gave these boys something just a little bit early he gave these boys something that they did not have in the upper room he gave these fellas something because these were his preachers they wasn't his preachers those were saved people those were believers in the upper room but these are the men that he was going to establish a new testament church with amen And he wanted to make sure they had everything they needed to get the job done. You see, these disciples are about to offer others what he did for them. How do I know that's true? Because I've read the Bible. Do you understand that? Here you've got the the Apostle Peter. My gracious, could we not write a book upon him? Matter of fact, there's books in there with his name on it. Amen. And you'll look and the devil will try to tell you, ain't he the one that denied Christ three times? Yes, he is. But ain't he the one that got forgiven? Because he went into he went into that time when Jesus was arrested and he was sitting by the devil's fire. And yes, he denied him three times like Jesus said. But Jesus said, the devil's going to sift you as wheat. But he said, don't you worry about it. You go ahead and let it run its course. Because Peter, I have prayed for you. And it was a prayer that carried him in. It was the prayer that carried him through and it was a prayer that carried him to the day that he went to heaven. Amen. What he's trying to say is this. Don't you let what the devil says, don't you let the mistakes of your past, don't you let the sins that you committed define who you are. That's not who God created you to be. He created you to be something more because when you get to the book of Acts, that same man that just denied Christ three times by the devil's fire, that said, I don't even know him. That buddy is a same man that's on his way to the temple to worship and a man lame from his birth he never walked a day in his life he's never worked a job he was carried everywhere he went he was sitting there just begging for enough to get some bread on the day and he said can I have some money you got any gold you got any silver and here's what the apostle Peter said he said I ain't got no gold I ain't got no silver but such as I have I give unto you and what was the next thing he did he reached those hands down it's the hands that God blessed him with and the hands that God anointed him with and the gift that lived inside of him bless God I'm about to have a spell up in here it was what God gave him he reached down and he touched that man and the power of God that God put inside of him it healed him it saved him and the man leaped up from there and he never had to beg again amen Woo, glory What I'm telling you is he would have never done that had it not been for the blessing God gave him before he went out to glory. Are you hearing me tonight? He said there's coming a day. They're going to walk to church. There's going to be a lame man that can't walk. He can't get on his own. But he said, I'm going to put something on the inside of you. It ain't for you to keep for yourself. It's to share with somebody that ain't got it. Woo, glory. I feel like I'm about to come apart the seams. You see, God empowered these 11 preachers to do more things. I'll get to it if I can hold out. But you see, God knew that there were people that needed a touch from up on high, and since they couldn't reach heaven and heaven didn't come down for them, he anointed 11 preachers to be his representative down here. He gave them a blessing. He gave them anointing because there's people that were lost. There was people that need healed. There were people that had demon possession. There were people that had needs, and these are needs that only heaven could meet, only heaven could satisfy. So he gave what he needed that, that they could meet the needs of the others who did not and had not. He made sure they had it and had it in abundance and had more than enough and had it when they needed it. Amen. And so now you got that same man that, yeah, he denied God three times, but once he got filled with the Holy Ghost and once he got that blessing, all this took place after he denied him. Are you with me? 
And the fact of it is, God said, I'm going to give you something that that's never going to happen again. He said, you're not going to be the man that, that, that denied me. He said, you're going to be the man that walked on water. You're going to be the man that can touch someone and heal whatever disease they have. You're going to be the man that when somebody came, you're the one that comes along and gives them a gift that I gave you so that they go from I can't to I can. Amen. Bless God, is that not the attitude you and me need to have? It's not go through our Christian walk in this world by saying I can't, I can't, I can't, but saying God touched me from on high because I want to say I can. Amen. Because you see, he blessed them before he sent them. That, that right there tells us, church, that before we go and before we do and before we say, we better get us a blessing from upon high. Because we're going to need to be more through Jesus Christ than what the need calls for. I don't ever want to be out representing God and come up short. I want to be able, whatever God he sends me to, who he sends me to, what he sends me to do, I want to be touched on high before I ever get there. I want God to give me something. I want to give me something else. I want to give me something special. I want more than enough to get the job done because I'd like to get the job done and have a little bit left over. Because every once in a while the messenger needs a little touch too. So the Apostle Peter, he's using that blessing, is he not? The Bible says that man just leaped up, grabbed up his bed and went with it. And then because he got that blessing and he's not who he was, he's not a denier anymore, but he's a water-walking, God-filled, spirit-filled preacher. You hear me? And because he got that blessing, because he got something for God, a man got to walk. The doctors couldn't help him. Nobody cared about him. They just drug him out there and put him in a place where somebody would give him enough to get that daily bread. But thank God, God's daily bread is a whole lot different than man's daily bread. Are you with me? And the fact of it is, God said, I can give you enough to eat. He said, or I can give you the ability to walk and to work and to shout and to worship and to raise up and to shout to victory. And that right there was more than what you'd ever preach in a message is to see somebody everybody knew that could not never walk that could not never do that could not never work and all it took is one touch from a God spilled preacher that God gave him that gift and now that man can work that man can walk that man can go that man can worship that man can rejoice he can do a whole lot more because God blessed one preacher and knew that he would send him by the way of a man that needed a touch from God See, God gave them what they needed to overcome their enemies. Y'all remember a name, Saul of Tarsus. Boy, he persecuted God's church, did he not? He made orphans out of babies. He separated husbands and wives. He broke up homes. He killed. He murdered. He imprisoned. God said, I'm going to bless you because there's something I want you to understand. Because you're not going to have to fight every enemy. I'm going to overcome some enemies for you. And so Saul of Tarsus was on his road on the way to Damascus just to put more people in prison. And he had his preachers out there just preaching hard as they could go. And he would have been outside the devil. Paul would have, Saul would have been the greatest enemy they had. And then God met him and he said, oh, Saul, Saul. And the next thing you know, a man that stoned Stephen or had him stoned and a man that persecuted the church and a man that imprisoned and killed and murdered in God's own holy name. He said, I'm going to twist him. I'm going to turn him. I'm going to make him into one of the greatest apostles and preachers that has ever been. You know what God is trying to tell those disciples as he was blessing them? He's saying every enemy doesn't have to be fought. Every enemy doesn't have to be defeated that way. Every enemy ain't 
ain't something that you're going to have to deal with. Sometimes God says, I will save your enemies so that they're not enemies anymore. Are you hearing me tonight? Sometimes he'll take the worst enemy you ever had and thank God he'll make a blessing out of him. He'll be a brother. She'll be a sister. They'll be into the family of God. God had it planned all along. He would just bless them and get them through until he could turn the apostle, turn Saul of Tarsus into the apostle Paul. Amen. Amen. You see, sometimes God says, I'll show you. Oh, and I bet the devil hated that one, don't you? Oh, yeah. he, loved, oh he, he used Paul, Saul. Now all the devil could do is be a thorn in his side. Because, see, you see, Paul got the blessing of God, too. Let me just preach on. I'm wearing myself out. Because, you see, when God blessed them, they had something now that they didn't have before. Do you want to know what that is? They had experience. Well, what's experience got to do? Well, it's got to do with this. First, you learn to crawl. Then you learn to walk. Then you learn to run. Then you learn to take long distances. Then you, get, then you, then you understand that you know how to get around. You know how to go places. What he's going to do when they're early in their ministry, they wouldn't have been ready for blessing. They couldn't understand the blessing. But after three and a half years of walking with the Lord Jesus Christ and looking at everything that he had done and be a witness in all his miracles, now they're ready for miracles of their self. What I'm trying to tell you is this, is that the longer you walk with him, the more that you walk with him, the more time you spend with him, the more you see what he can actually do through you and others, is the more God will do through you, amen. It's the experience of being a Christian. As those of us who've been walking with him for 30 or 40 years, bless God, and you've got new converts that are coming in, we've seen more, we've done more, we've heard more, we know more about the Lord Jesus Christ because we spent time with him. And so three and a half years may not seem like long to you and me, but that's a lifetime when you're walking three and a half years with Jesus every day. So they saw some things. They were ready. Now they could take the blessing plus the experience they got by walking with him and hearing him preach and watching what he could do. Now they're ready to be blessed because now they've got experience that God has something that he can bless that they can use. Is there anybody in this church been walking for God for a while and you're able to do more now with Jesus than you ever did when you started out? You understand more. You've witnessed more. Let me just go right ahead with it. You see, Jesus left the blessing. Why is it so important to have the blessing that he left with them? Because some of them old boys are going to spend time in prison, are they not? You see, God didn't tell them right off the bat that some of them would have a prison ministry. Now, prison ministry today means you're on the outside, you go on the inside. Present, prison ministry for the Lord Jesus Christ meant you went in the prison as a prisoner, now's your ministry. It's a whole different guy, it's a whole different game now, ain't it? I mean, it must have been awful bad because the apostle Peter, when he was, he was arrested and the king, King Herod had him arrested because it pleased the unbelieving Jews. And the fact of it is, he was so tore up that when the angel came because of the prayers of the church, had to wake him up in order to set him free. You see, God gave him peace right in the midst of that. The apostle Paul, how many times they put him in prison? He just preached to them. God gave them a blessing because some of them would fall by the wayside and be in prison for preaching the, the, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God says when you get in prison, don't give up and certainly don't shut up. He said that's giving you a place and you just go ahead and preach. They can't get away from you, so you just go ahead and shell the corn. You just tell it. Don't you hold nothing back. They're either going to get saved or they're just going to say, turn me loose. Just turn him loose to get rid of him. If you ever want to put somebody there to preach in any kind of crowd, get somebody that's been through some rough places in their life. Let them experience some hardship. Let somebody be a recovering drug, a drug addict or recovering alcoholic or somebody being in prison, in and out of jail, and God touched their life and saved them. That's somebody that can go in there and they can preach a message that prisoners can understand. These watered-down messages, it won't affect them whatsoever. If you get somebody that's lived it, been there, done that, they can preach a message that the God will anoint, and he'll get the job done with that. Let me, let me hurry up. 
Here's what I'm trying to say. Prison couldn't stop them. Sometimes they'd put them in prison. Sometimes they, they would arrest them and whatever it is. Let me just get ahead on. You see, Jesus walked with them. He walked throughout Israel, did he not? He walked through the cities. He walked through the, the little villages. He walked through the mountains. He went through the deserts. He went across the Jordan River. But not only that, let me get to where I need to be. But the fact of it is, hey, they got to see him do something that nobody else got to see. Or you want to know what it is? Yeah, I'm going to tell you anyway. He got to see him walk upon water. You see, he anointed them because he knew that in the worst times of their life that Jesus could do something nobody else could do. They're in a boat. They know what it's like to have Jesus in the boat and say, Master, don't you care that we perish? And watch him get up and step out on the bow of the boat and calm the storm. But now he ain't even in the boat. And they understand now that he was a part in the mountain to pray. But here he comes about midnight and the storm is still storming and the wind's still blowing, and the waves are still banging on the boat, and they're still scared, and here he comes, finds them in the middle of the, of the lake, in the middle of the dark, in the middle of the storm, walks right up to it, and thank God you've got one disciple in that. He's having to learn sometimes God can, you can have a crowd, sometimes you can have a group, sometimes you can have somebody that'll help you, but bless God when you're out on your own, and it's just you and Jesus, you know what they learned that night? That one that had enough faith that no matter what they said in the boat to him, no matter how many times he heard, don't do it, don't do it. Bless God, he stepped out of the boat and Jesus was still out there. He said, all I need is for you to tell me to get out of this boat and come to where you are. And thank God he got out of there. He walked on water, amen. Because every once in a while, God will set you aside away from everybody else, away from where it's comfortable, away from the way everybody else does it, and everything that you've ever known to set you aside to do something nobody has ever done. And why not the Apostle Peter? Why not him? Bless God, you need to ask yourself, when God wants to do something miraculous, somebody, why not me, God? Amen. It's always God wanting to do something through somebody else. Well, let me tell you something. To somebody else, you are somebody else. Amen. Amen. And God blessed him to let him know that, Peter, sometimes, buddy, it's just going to be you and me. Sometimes you're going to have to step aside. Sometimes you're going to have to get away from the crowd. Sometimes you've got to get away from the norm. Sometimes it's going to be you and me doing something that neither one of us has ever done. But here's what I want to try to get to you. Don't you ever think that he was the one that walked on water and began to sing? No, no, no. You reach on past that. Because once he had that hand out there and said, Lord, save me, they walked hand in hand on water back together. They never breathed it below the water. He never sank again what I'm trying to tell you is this you just get Lord just have the faith let God do something with you that he's never done before in your life and step out on faith and if it doesn't look like it's going to work just put your eyes upon Jesus and keep walking amen Amen. because they walk together back to the boat I don't know about you but if I'd have been the apostle Peter I'd have been kindly swelled up say boys uh, how's it back here in the boat Who's going to be next? He was the type to rub it in, by the way. He's arrogant. As I told you, at Jesus' arrest, he's the only one who brought a sword. And it was a prayer meeting. And he used it. He said, I'll fight the whole Roman army. I don't care. I've walked on water. What are you done? You tell me that wasn't a, that wasn't a talking point in his life for the rest of his days. It would have been with me. You'd have heard if I'd have walked on water and I had witnesses, witnesses, preachers saw him do it. God said he did it. God said I want it wrote in the Bible too. Put it in the Gospels. I'm proud of what that man done. He got out of the boat. He walked on the water. Me and him walked on the water together. And buddy, that's something nobody else had the courage or the faith to get out of the boat. If I'd have done that, you'd have heard it every Sunday for me. I'd keep water in the baptistry just to try it. Now, who's got my hand? Come on. We'll start on this end, go to the other end. The only thing is, that'd make it awful hard to baptize, wouldn't it? 
Because sometimes, dear friend, you're going to have to step out on faith if you're going to walk with him. But thank God they had the blessing, did they not? The apostle Peter climbed a mountain. He got out of the boat and he walked on water in the middle of a storm. Let me just preach on if I can. He walked through the valleys. And one day he's going to walk to heaven with him. Let me get this out so I can go ahead and, and close. The blessing has the power to make God's words come to pass. Are you hearing me? Because without the power of God, they're just words. Because one of the greatest gifts he gave when he gave a blessing, it wasn't so anybody would walk on water. It wasn't for the miracles whatsoever. They are a byproduct of the anointing of God. Don't get caught up on the laying on of hands and get caught up on driving this out and that out. No, no, no. The greatest gift he gave them that when he blessed them was the power of God when they preached. That's why he called them. That's why he trained them. That's why he anointed them. And that's why he sent them. The church wasn't to be built on miracles. The church was to be built on the word of Almighty God. That's why he gave us a Bible. That's why he did not give us a how-to on miracles. Thank God for the miracles. Thank God for what he still does. Thank God for touching bodies. Thank God for healing sickness. But bless God, the greatest gift God ever gave me and you and any preacher... And the greatest gift he gave them apostles that day when he touched them and blessed them was the fact is, boys, I'm sending you out to preach the word of Almighty God. He said, I'm God, I change not. All they've got is a Bible. You preach that Bible. Thank God, have you ever thought about this? They preached the Bible straight from the throne of grace before it had a written word. The New Testament hadn't been written. The New Testament church hadn't been established. But he gave them the word of God from upon high. He blessed them so so he could speak through them, amen. And I'm going to tell you what, preaching is, preaching, preaching is what's going to get you through the rough times of your life. It ain't the miracles. Miracles are far and few in between, do you hear me? But let me tell you, the word of God shall not pass away. Are You get that? This world come and goes, fads come and goes, preachers come and goes, but the word that us preachers preaches will last for all of eternity. That word is right here in written form. That word now sits upon the ha- a right hand of God on the throne of grace. That word just anointed and blessed those 11 preachers before he sent them out. That word is what gets us in the midnight hour. That word when we're beaten down and it seems like we're surrounded by enemies and we are emotion is that, Lord, I'm depressed, I'm disgusted, I ain't got the strength to fight back I don't know what to do and when you go through that the God that loves you and lives inside of you he'll give you a word from this book and that word to change your situation that word to give you strength you didn't have it'll light the path in the midst of your darkness he'll comfort you where there is no comfort and he'll give you what you need bless God thank you Jesus for the word amen Amen. because they were out to preach the word was it not And boy, he hammered that with the Apostle Paul, did he not? So you see, the blessing has the power to make God's words come to pass. Important messages and messengers, important messengers blessed those with less power or influence. What am I talking about? Well, just get on the scriptures with me. You've got 11 preachers who have not yet been filled with the Holy Ghost, that he's blessed. You've got one God. Now, who's the greater, who's the lesser? Thank you for that. You just leave me hanging. So what's he blessing them for? Because the greatest preacher that had ever been was standing right in front of them. 
He's a preacher that overcome death, hell, and the grave. He's a preacher that's about to send them out to preach the same message that he had preached to them. He's about to build a New Testament church that did not exist. And he needed them anointed. He needed them empowered. But most of all, he needed them to know the truth. You can preach anything. You can come up with a fad. You can find something that'll make people yay and whatever. But if it ain't the anointed word of Almighty God, it ain't nothing but foolish words. It's a bunch of malarkey. It only lasts for a small time. And about the time that you leave here, that word is done left you. But bless God, church, if you get something from the throne of grace and it came out of the pages of them 66 books in this King James Bible, you've got something that goes everywhere you do. You can't get away from it. The devil can't do nothing with it. God defeated him three times in his temptation with the word of Almighty God. It'll work on the same devil. He's still defeated. That word has not changed. And what God gives you and me the greatest gift is the word of God amen Amen. and so he gave them the word of God because he intended on them to preach the truth and third Jesus already did the thing that they would do do y'all know tonight church that there ain't nowhere we can go that he ain't already been there They ain't nowhere that he could lead us that his footsteps ain't already there for us to follow. He's been in every situation, every country, every heart, every every possibility. He's already been there. And the fact of it is, we're just going where he has already been. He's already got the foundation. We're just walking on his foundation. If you ever wanted a, a one of those uh, what, I don't know, New Year's resolutions, what I'm trying to get out, I don't believe in them. Nobody keeps them. You make them, but you don't keep them. If you was ever going to make one and stick to it, it would be give me more of this blessed book. Give me more of the Word of God. Give me something that's going to work. Give me something that I can stand on. Give me something that makes the devil tremble. Give me something that even my enemies can't can't attack and can't win over on me. You give me something that is the word of Almighty God. The more that you know about this blessed book, the less victimized the victimized that the devil can do to you. The more that you know about this, the more power you got. The more you know about this, the more you know about God Almighty, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. What I'm trying to tell you here tonight is is get in this blessed book. That's what they built the New Testament church on. That's what He gave. His word changes not. There ain't nothing greater to build a church on church than the word of God. You build these foolish get-together gatherings on this, that, and other, entertainment, recreation, a brand new word, another Bible, it's going to fall because it can't stand. You build it on that blessed book and he's over 2,000 years old and thank God the New Testament church is still here. We've still got a foundation. we still got we still got the power of God and the God of this word will bless his word. Finally. Oh boy. And Acts... And I wish I'd have wrote down where it was. I meant to, but I didn't. But it's in the book of Acts somewhere. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. I can't remember what book it's in. I don't even know what verse, but I know it's in the book of Acts because I read it and I wrote it down. What am I trying to say? So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. That, grew, that word of God grew that the more time you spend in that word, the more it's going to grow. The more time you spend in it, the more words you're going to get. The more time you spend in it is the more that God is going to bless. The more time you spend in this, the more you're going to know about God. The more time you spend in this, the more you're going to have victory over the devil. The more time you spend in this is the less time you're going to be a victim saying, God, why me? And the more time that you spend in this, the more time you can know that God puts you in that place for a specific pur- pur- her purpose. And God's placed in there so that you could be a victory, so that you could be like the 11 that was standing in front of him. Listen, there was a whole lot more believed. There's a whole lot more followed him. There's a whole lot more than he touched, but he only called 11 to preach the word of God. Finally, they would preach with power to defeat devils because why? 
They were preaching with the breath of God. What am I talking about? They went to the, they left here and went to the temple. If I read the scripture right, they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Did you read that? I just read it again. Verse fifty-three. Didn't say they went to preach. That preaching came after the day of Pentecost. God said, when you boys go out there and you start introducing yourself as my hand-picked preachers, he said, I want you to preach with power. What, was, what did the crowd in Israel say? They ain't very learned. They might be a bit ignorant, but there's one thing that is certain that I know. They've been with Jesus. What God wants us to do is to preach, bless God, it's like they know that we have been with Jesus. If I want to preach a message, if I want to preach anywhere, here or anywhere else, I want you to know that I've spent time with Jesus, that I'm preaching for him. It's all about his glory. And you see, sometimes we just have to preach and defeat the devil with the word of Almighty God. Are you with me? That word is all we got. It worked for Jesus after he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and the Spirit led him in the wilderness. There ain't nobody out there to hear the conversation but him and the devil. It's that chief devil. It ain't a demon. It ain't a lesser one. It's the devil himself. And three times the devil tried to get him to do something and three times he used this precious word I'm telling you church that you can defeat the devil on the word of almighty God <coughs> but he preached with the breath of God let me circle back around to that on the day of Pentecost does the Bible not say that they got the gift of the Holy Spirit to 120 in the upper room he came as a mighty rushing wind he came with cloven tongues of fire. Ain't that the Bible? Ain't that in Acts chapter number 2? And what God is trying to say, before I ever sent them out to preach, before they ever went to do something in my name, before miracles, before anything, before they ever got out and told them about the gospel, I wanted to empower them from a bone high. I wanted them to preach with power. You see, two different times, the breath of God came into his created human being. The first time was in the Garden of Eden. Adam was a lump of clump of clay if you would he was nothing more than dust and it looked like a human form but he had no life into him and Jesus breathed the breath of life and Adam became a living soul and the second time that the breath of God came out it was at the day of Pentecost he didn't just breathe into Adam and Eve he breathed into the New Testament church and the breath that he gave on the day of Pentecost it's an ever born again believer thank God when you and I get saved we don't get the Holy Ghost afterwards he comes in at the moment of salvation and thank God for time to time he infills us he blesses us he fills us up sometimes you can be just like me I'm almost 66 years old right now I feel blessed God like I'm 19 but I know that's going to leave me as soon as I leave the church <coughs> God is trying to say I blessed them then I filled them with the Holy Spirit if you try to do something on your own, dear friend, you'll never fail. You'll fail. But if you let that anointing of God come upon you before you try to do anything in his name, I'm telling you, you'll win every time. Amen? All right, you've preached me into submission. I quit. We don't have a piano player, but that'll be all right. You see, Jesus walked with them through Israel, through the water, on the water, the valleys, the mountain. Now he walks with them from heaven. What am I talking about? I'm talking about unless in his physical body, as long as he was through it, you had to be right with him, to be with him. Now he sits on the right hand of the Father from the throne of grace, and he's with everybody. There'll never be a time, never be a time that he is not with you and me if you're saved. While we stand to our feet, we're going to have a, we're going to have an altar call. Landon's playing the music. If you got anything you need to pray about, the altar.
Anybody got anything on your mind, your heart? All right, Wednesday, Kids Connection meets at 6. We'll meet at 7 for Bible study. Get here early enough. Once again, I'll make coffee. Amen. All right, appreciate your kind attention. Appreciate it. We got a nice crowd tonight.